Hey guys, welcome back. Yesterday, we were talking about flying closer to the flame of God's holiness. We used Isaiah as a great example of that and how after the lips had been touched by the coal and God called for somebody to serve, Isaiah said, here I am, I'm ready to go. I want to take you to another place where it's hot. It was hot there, but there's also a place Jesus defines as could be quite hot as well. And that's the the fire of persecution, fire of persecution. Servants must know if they're going to live according to the new laws and the new mandates that God gives to them in what means serving means, they're going to be persecuted. I wish I had better news from you, uh, for you. I wish I wish I could tell you that become a servant of God and and they get everybody's going to be kind to you and and everybody's going to really blow sunshine in your face and tell you what a great person you are. Apparently, that's not going to happen. There might be times when there might be somebody want to say, hey, thank you for serving so beautifully, but it's not often. It's not often. Most of the time, but not all of the time, persecution can be something that every servant has to experience. You know, sometimes just knowing these things helps. Sometimes just knowing that this is going to happen is good for us to be able to prepare our minds and our hearts for such an event. In Matthew chapter 5, Jesus speaks of the beautiful Beatitudes. He said, blessed are those who mourn, blessed are those who are meek, blessed are the peacemakers, blessed are, are all those, those, those servant attituded kind of people. And then at a particular point, he sobers everybody else and says, hey, don't get too romantic about this idea of what a servant is going to look like. But blessed are those who do all that because they're going to be persecuted, because they hunger and they thirst after righteousness. And that the things of this world don't mean anything to them anymore. They will be persecuted. It's not an if or a maybe. It's a will. Now, as I said, it's not all the time. It's not like we get out of bed every day and we're persecuted. Sadly, in some countries, it's a bit close to that, where they risk their lives to love and to serve God. For most of us, it's pretty comfortable. But there are times when at work, people are going to misunderstand you. People are going to misquote you. People are going to deliberately look around and just shake their heads and say, who's this guy, man, or who's this girl? They're from another planet. And I wish I could tell you you are, but you're not. But you act sometimes like you are. It's a wonderful thing to see people evidencing servant-like qualities. Humility, that's a great place for a servant. Meekness, which simply means power under control. Remember, we've heard the statement, you know the cliche well, meekness is not weakness, but meekness is a powerful position to hold, but it's power under control. The perfect picture would be of Jesus when he stood before Pilate that night, and Pilate said, hey, don't you know I'm a king? I have power over you. And Jesus smiled and said, you have no power over me other than the power and the authority that God has given to you just for these few moments. But I could call 10,000 angels and they could take me out of this place in a flash and a blur and I would be gone. And so Jesus is from a servant positioning, evidencing incredible meekness, incredible strength under pressure. And, and you know, when you put strength under pressure and put the two together, you've got a good combination. But when we look at what it means to really be a servant of God, there will be persecution. There always has been. Just look back in the Old Testament, you see Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego being put in a very hot place called a fiery furnace. It doesn't get too much hotter than that. And the king had said, fire that thing up seven times hotter than normal and throw these three guys in there. And when they opened the door of the furnace, it burnt up the soldiers who went in to throw them in. And yet in the midst of the persecution, people, in the midst of that persecution, who was walking with them? When the king looked into the furnace and in shock, he says to the people, he says, how many people did we throw in the fire? And they said, oh, king, there were, there were three. And he says, well, man, I don't know what I've been smoking, but there's four people in here. There's four people in that, in that fire. And, and the people, suddenly the shock was, there's one who walks amongst the like unto the son of man. It was Jesus. Man, Jesus is walking in the fiery furnace with them. And Jesus is walking with them as if he was there. And when they took them out of that fiery furnace, not even a smell of fire on them, not even a singe of a hair on their head was, was, was seen. Jesus walked with them in the midst of persecution. 
Now, we may not be thrown into fiery furnaces, but I guarantee you behave like Jesus. They're going to treat you like they treated him. You be a servant of note and watch what the world will do with you. They will malign you. Jesus told us to expect that. They will act as false witnesses against you and they'll turn against you. But don't sweat it. Don't sweat it. Because in the midst of that heat, Jesus is there with you. You know, revel on that fact. Things aren't always as they appear to be. The very place where it appears that God is not is the very place that He is. Right there in the midst of it with you. So let's look up. Let's endure. And let's be good servants even in that hot place. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.